So he has taken a significant step forward. The jo- our narrative with Josh Allen was always, look, there's a way for him to be good. Yeah. He can, you know, there's, there's a potential for him to improve and get a lot better at these things. And if he does that, there's a way for him to be a viable, decent NFL quarterback. I think the jury's still out in terms of what exactly he is. We, he's taken enough steps towards that goal where, you know, we talked a few weeks ago about which teams are still happy with their quarterback situation. I think he's improved enough that the Bills would still be happy, right? They're looking at next year going... Oh, they're happy. Because they're thinking of that linear development, right? It's right, like, of we started off here, we took a step forward here, next year we'll be here. One or two years down the line, we're talking about an all-pro right here. Right. Now, we know that it doesn't always go that way. How's our financial plan coming? Super! Chris, any advice? With Western and Southern, preparing for your financial future can be easier than you think. Favorite receiver? Huh? To get started, visit westernsouthern.com. All right, now let's get into all the Thanksgiving action. Chicago Bears at the Detroit Lions. It's a Thanksgiving tradition. Mm. The noon 1230, whatever it is, 1230 game at Detroit. They usually don't have the same game two years in a row. It used to be like the Lions would play an AFC team one year and then the NFC team the next year and they'd switch with the Cowboys. This is an exact rematch from last year's. You know, Bear, it was Bears Lions last year. Right. More importantly, it's it's Jeff Driscoll against Mitchell Trubisky. Yeah. Hey, Mitchell looked all right last week. It's going to be our uh, he our has weekly. legitimately he's creeping back toward average. Crept he's cre- back toward average over yeah. the last couple of weeks. Shop.pff.com. I mean, the um, improvement in Trubisky. It's not like it's very Bortlesy, right? I mean, there yes. are enough games where he looks. I mean, very like reasonable. emphasis on the average, right? Yeah. He's a world away from good. Sure, but he's not grading in the 40s anymore. So on one hand, I thought the offense looked a little bit cleaner last week for the Bears. It had a little bit of that trickeration, and there was a wide open seam route that was dropped that should right. have been an easy big, uh, big chunk play. Like they're scheming it up a little bit better. On the other hand. <laughs> It was the Giants yes. in their secondary. Yeah. So this is, it was interesting because this is what the offense should have looked like, right? right? Which is basically like, it's functioning, guys are open, and now Trubisky's just ma- making enough misses to make it interesting. As opposed to before, yeah. where it's like, this is just nothing functions because Trubisky is playing so bad, we can't even execute any sort of offense. Like, this is just, this is what the offense should look like, and now the quarterback is holding it back. To a regular degree. Right. But, like, to a winnable degree. I mean, you beat the Giants playing like this. The Lions are now no great shakes either. You can win with Trubisky playing merely average football, which yeah. he's been playing the last couple of weeks. He has. So maybe it won't be that much of a disaster of a game. Plus, it'll, it's in the dome. Yes, and it'll help if Khalil Mack has another game like he had last week where he absolutely wrecks his opposing uh, blocker, which yes. in this case would be Taylor Decker. Yeah, Decker's just been okay. Yes. Uh, uh, let's have a look. He last time I checked. terribly last week against Chandler Jones. This isn't last week. This is um, uh, this that, week one. Week one, he graded terribly. Um, last week, he did well against the Redskins. He's actually on a run of good form. Um, over the season, he's been okay. 60s, but, right? In the 60s? Uh, he's clawed his way up into the 70s. 73.2 oh, so overall. That's, that's not and bad. that's basically down to the last month, right? Against Oakland, no pass rush. Chicago, the last time. Um, Dallas and Washington. We've got four straight pretty good games, which has pulled his grade right up. Well, there you go. But we've seen, I mean, he is he is on the other end of arguably Akilah Mack's finest career highlight, which was just running the hell right through yeah. Taylor Decker. So there's definitely the capacity for that to happen again. Uh, so there's uh, certainly a matchup to watch there. Driscoll's had a, a rough stretch the last few weeks. I mean, he that's... Look, he, he's really only played one decent stretch of football ever in his career yeah and it was when he transferred from florida to louisiana tech he was always a little bit toolsy you know decent arm athletic could run a little bit and the thing the thing that could work with these lions receivers again when you have marvin jones and you have kenny galladay and you've got hawkinson um what we've seen from stafford is that aggressiveness throwing the ball down the field you know that that gives Driscoll in this past game a shot in any given week. Right. So he's he is a bad quarterback along with a bunch of other bad quarterbacks. But unlike the other guys, he has the yeah he has the tools. He has the physical abilities to make 
random big plays that will make you forget about a lot of bad, or at least make people intrigued enough to live with the bad, hoping that eventually they can swing the balance back towards you know the good things and away from the bad. Right. So in a way that, like, if you know, if Ryan Finley did all the things that Jeff Driscoll did, and you know, substituted one crazy big play for just a couple more you know decent plays, you would be dramatically more inclined to run with Driscoll than you would with Finley because. Yeah, I mean, if Finley could do that, they would have had a shot last week. For all the bad that there was against Pittsburgh, if you can sneak right. one of those big plays but in. But it's just amazing the sort of the difference that it makes to attitude and perception, right? It's like you're looking at a fundamentally bad player who, because of these, the propensity to every now and again, will make a crazy play happen. You're like, ooh, ooh. You know the way, like, the, like we were talking about Mariota, right? The second you wanted to bench him, yeah. he'd make a big play, and we're like, oh, okay, fine, let's give him a little bit longer. It, it, this is like the same thing, but... You know, in terms of maybe we give him a bit longer in future. You know, yeah. it's like every one of those big plays buys him like another three quarters of bad play. Yeah, but yet ultimately, you know, it's <laughs> it's never going to happen. Like it, it's a we just wasted everybody's time. It's a good game to kick things off. I, it's either a good one or a terrible one, right? This either this either needs to go at the start where everybody's too busy, you know, eating and stuff, or it needs to come at the end when everybody's hammered and doesn't care. No, I think it's at the beginning when people are still cooking. Okay. Or it's you just know. on in the background? It's background yeah. noise. It's the background noise game. Okay. It's like your noon Big Ten kickoff. You know, it's like Iowa, Minnesota. But Minnesota's good this year. It's it's Northwestern and Purdue right. at noon. Yeah. And it just feels like. Yeah, it's a good. I like game. I like that description. It's background as, you know, you're, you're finishing the meal. Who wins the, meal. the background noise bowl? The background noise bowl. I have gone Detroit. All right, I'm going with the Bears. Okay. Trust that defense and uh, Trubisky's averageness. Which he's crept back to. Crept back toward uh, mediocrity. All right. The, the four o'clock game, Buffalo Bills at the Dallas Cowboys. I, I like this game. I, it's, not, it's not flashy on paper because, it, you know, the Bills, they've got a great defense. Mm -hmm. I think it, I'm seeing people tweeting about, hey, do you guys still. Um, People are taking victory laps over people not saying Josh Allen was a bust. Well, let's get to let's get into some what? Right. People think Josh Allen's fantastic because they're winning and he's and he is scoring some touchdowns. Hmm. Um, like throwing some and rushing for some. This entire right. season appears to have been just people waiting for the opportunity to take victory laps on everything. Then, so the victory fact, honestly, that's what Twitter seems to be now. Oh, man. People I, I, just waiting for the chance to take a victory lap on anything. I just saw somebody in the industry being like, well, look, Josh Allen, you know, he's, he's turned out pretty good. I mean, I, I think he's become, other than the fact that he hasn't been accurate throwing the ball down the field and he has been much better in the short game, mm -hmm. The overall body of work, which is inconsistent, and the fact that they're winning is very dependent on the defense. And I even said he does have some of that high-end ability, which includes the rushing, where he could put up a ton of touchdowns, but the throw-for-throw -throw efficiency still just isn't there, right? I am going to firmly stick with this as a 2017 Jags and 2018 Bears situation, which needs to be monitored closely. Josh Allen's development. as nice, He's done a lot of nice things this year. But I don't think we've answered any questions about his future this year, or many. No. What did um, I just kick? It's hard to tell. Uh, I know that, so I, you have to add in the rushing, right, which is obviously an important part of this. But he has thrown for like 80 more yards than Gardner Minshew, who oh, yeah. obviously hasn't played for stretches and of he's the got, season. Allen has seven rushing touchdowns. He's been a threat with his legs. His fumbles have been a disaster. That's why the rushing grade's down. People are debating that in the... His, in the comments, his, he's got the third most fumbles in the NFL, second his, most. His passer rating is 86, which is, uh, it's like one point higher than Philip Rivers, who people are writing eulogies for. It's six points higher than Jared Goff, who is termed a disaster right now. Yeah, I mean, now. It's, it's below average. Now, as I say, obviously, you're de it's well below average. Obviously, you're dealing with, it's just, And he's 31st in PFF grades. Yeah. So, let's, well, let's screen out some, uh, some low-level people. What did I say it was? 80... It's 26th. It's below Sam Darnold. It's below Daniel Jones, for God's sake, who's leading the league in so, turnover-worthy plays since he's got into the, the game. My whole thing, when that whole draft class came out, Baker, Darnold, Lamar, and all that stuff, I mean, 
I know people want to make declarations here in year two, but my whole point when we said Baker was the top quarterback was, hey, Baker will probably have more of the top seasons of that class than any than any other guy. But in any given season, it could, Donald could be the best of that group, and Lamar could be the best of that group. Just like if you look at the careers of Dak, Wentz, and Goff, that draft class, since they came in, Dak has been the best quarterback of that trio now probably two out of those four seasons. Wentz was the best quarterback out of that trio in 2017, and Goff was the best group out of that group last year. Yeah. It's not... It's not just like, hey, let's stack them, and that's going to remain right. the same. The, the more you do, the, the longer you do this, the more you understand that none of these things are static. Yeah, things change year on year. Right, and you can't <laughs> you can't lock anything in as well. This is decided. Like right now, right now, Lamar Jackson is playing insane football. Right, he looks phenomenal. Um, that offense looks unstoppable collectively. Yep. The idea. That so, like, people are not last week or coming off Monday Night Football that beat down um, the Ravens perpetrated. Well, everyone is now asking, well, Lamar or Patrick Mahomes? I mean, come on, like, like, just let it breathe a little bit before we go completely off the deep end. Like, you we just have not seen that's our industry, though, Sam. That is our industry. I know, but it's the last thing we saw. You know, have it was a little bit of self awareness to it, understand how this works. Imagine our industry work in the stock market. No, they would have been like, "Bitcoin's higher than ever. I'm buying. Like Buy us. high, sell low." <laughs> That's what they would do. Yeah, like we did. It's just, it's, it's silly. So that would be our industry. So the Josh Allen thing is interesting because he has made really significant strides in certain areas. He has become significantly more accurate this year than last year and in college now it's within certain parameters as we've discussed before he still can't seem to hit the broad side of a barn door deep except yeah. last week last week he finally he connected had a nice pass with, to John, with John, John Brown. Brown but that's been there all season right and he hasn't hit those yep um so he has taken a significant step forward the jo- our narrative with Josh Allen was always look there's a way for him to be good yeah he can you know there's there's a potential for him to improve and get a lot better at these things. And if he does that, there's a way for him to be a viable, decent NFL quarterback. I think the jury's still out in terms of what exactly he is. We, he's taken enough steps towards that goal where, you know, we talked a few weeks ago about which teams are still happy with their quarterback situation. I think he's improved enough that the Bills would still be happy, right? They're looking at next year going... Oh, they're happy. Because they're thinking of that linear development, right? It's right, like, of we started off here, we took a step forward here, next year we'll be here. One or two years down the line, we're talking about an all-pro right here. Right. Now, we know that it doesn't always go that way, but I think as long as people are taking those steps, I think it's fine to think that way. You know, I don't think it's necessarily a bad move to... Um, to not to give credence to the idea that a guy can linearly get better year on year. So as long as Josh Allen is taking these steps in the right direction, I'm fine with the idea of saying, all right, he is the Bills franchise quarterback. They are winning games with him, and the potential is there for him to get even better. But let's not act like he's already amazing, because he need, isn't. They just need to be aware. We've seen, we've seen this story before where people said, okay, there it is. We're good, and you know, handle some of the warning signs. All that said, Allen is entertaining uh, because he can throw absolute lasers that show up. Yes. Um, and just to to back up that other point too about like in any given season, we have a season on record in 2016 when he was at Wyoming where he outgraded Josh Rosen. He outgraded. Um, he was up there probably I think with Lamar, and I think he was up there with Darnold. Like there were a, there was a season where a lot of things came together, and his big playability was spectacular and all that stuff, but his draft year, he was the worst of the group. Mm-hmm. He was bad you know, for a guy that was going in the first round. Yeah. But you take the whole body of work, and it's like, all right, you're gonna, you could have some ebbs and flows here in Josh Allen's development. Anyway, um, I'm really looking forward to the matchup on the other side. Yeah. The Bills defense, we talk about their pass coverage all the time and um, just how fundamentally sound they are, and Tredavious White... Uh, going up against the Cowboys and Amari Cooper. Um, I just want to say, too, so Amari Cooper was shut out last week, Mm -hmm. right? Didn't have a catch. And in New England, there's a big deal about, well, Stephon Gilmore shut down Amari Cooper, which he did for the most part. Like, technically, he was in coverage on Amari quite a bit, and Amari Mm -hmm. caught zero catches, had zero catches. There was a negated drag route for a first down. Mm -hmm. 
And then there was Dak's big throw, that fourth down, beautiful pass away from coverage that Amari easily could have caught. Mm -hmm. So even though we were the ones, we didn't start the coverage, like we pushed the coverage stats as much as anyone, please. The grade tells the story more than the coverage stats. Gilmore got beat multiple times, and it was either negated by a penalty, Amari didn't catch the ball, or there was an overthrow. Dak had an overthrow in another one. Right. So. Also, let's remember there was a driving rainstorm, which will help. And there was a driving rainstorm. in your passing game. So Stephon Gilmore is awesome. Yes. We love Stephon Gilmore. The interception was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. He's the highest graded corner in the NFL over the last two years. But let's not go crazy with this narrative. All that said, when you take Amari out of this offense, I know they had success a couple weeks ago when he was banged up. But you take him out, it puts a little bit more pressure on everybody else. Amari's been one of the best at beating single coverage. Uh, the Bills will mix it up zone and man, but when he does match up against Tredavious White, old SEC battle, it'll be a good one. That will be a good one, and the other side will be good as well. Um, Michael Gallup versus Levi Wallace yeah. on the other side. That, I mean, th- this is a really fun matchup between this Bills defense that is so fundamentally sound, so good across the board, against this Dallas offense has been one of the best in the NFL this year, last week notwithstanding. Obviously, this week, they're going to be not in a driving rainstorm. Um, it's inside. It's in the dome in the dome so that will help different. right the offense should look back to its best they're also unlikely to get two horseshit tripping calls yeah those are bad yeah you um, might get um i would like every time mahomes plays in a dome i'm like oh he's gonna throw that 80 yarder to tyreek we might get josh allen unleashing one on indoors one. here yeah throws it 90 yards to john brown who's 60 yards downfield yeah i mean just to just to sh- like that's but that's how you set the tone first play you throw it as far as you can mm-hmm and really get it in Dallas's head that you you know you got to cover the whole field. Yeah. Then they'll start playing Greg Williams safety, and then it's like eleven on ten. Mm. Okay. Strategy. But I mean, that's what they should do against the Jets. Like, they actually, should. imagine Greg Williams. <laughs> <laughs> the Bills are backed up at the goal line. They get the safety right. at the, the safety. already thirty yards off the off the line of scrimmage. First play. Let's uncork one seventy yards downfield. Make him play 40, 40 oh, yards off. That. Literally, just take him off the field. Essentially, that'd be great. Um, yeah. So if you're watching this game. Uh, you know, watch a little bit of the just watch the bills on the back end. They they create tight windows. Th- that's that's the thing, right? A good passing offense creates open throws. A good pass defense, you know, tightens those windows and everything. That's where the battle's going to be because the Cowboys have done a great job of creating open throws for Dak. The Bills have done a really nice job of just making life difficult on opposing offenses. Mm-hmm. That'll be a good battle to watch. Yeah, I mean, this is I, I this is a fascinating game. This is. I think yeah, this is the most exciting one of the Thanksgiving slate to me. Yeah, and the and the Bills have a they have a tough stretch here, so um, a big game. They're coming in eight and three, and I think you know everybody's out Dallas talent wise. Everybody's like, oh, they're six and five. They should be better than that, right? Mm-hmm. Probably. Yeah. So big game here. Uh, I'm going Dallas. Same. In this one. Good offense always beats good defense, and vice versa, as they say. The other interesting matchup in this will be the Buffalo D-line against Dallas' offensive line. Because oh, yeah. typically, good versus good, the pass protection wins. Um, but, you know, Buffalo do have the ability to get after the passer. They've got enough horses up front to get pressure, but will they be able to? And it's with few big names. Mm. Now they got Ed Oliver in first round, but it's not like he's dominating he's been good i mean it's just a bunch of good yeah up front guys like shaq lawson you know contributing and all Jerry that stuff. hughes lorenzo alexander like they've got they've got enough guys that can get after the quarterback um but they're going up against one of the best units all right and then after you've had your turkey mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and you're exhausted and you're tired it's the beached whale bowl yeah it's the rematch saints at falcons I Three might straight actually dome games. There, there's there should be weather games on Thanksgiving. Yeah. Should, we should see all these games outdoors and it's yeah. raining today. Um, raining know. here. Yeah. In Cincinnati uh-huh. it is. Yes. Um I might have been right about the beach whale thing. It's just that the explosion lasted a couple of weeks. Oh, you you think it's still alive? Well, last week they went we really went way back towards what yeah. we, what they've been before. Um I'm just saying, let's just throwing it out there. Maybe maybe it wasn't wrong. Falcons held the Saints to nine points. Yeah, how did, just a few. How weeks did ago. that happen? There's no way that happens twice, right? It was just a weird game. Like, so I used to always say, how do you stop? How do you stop Breeze or Brady or Peyton? You know those guys. Now Rogers. I mean, 
you just kind of show up and you can stop Rodgers now. Now, how do you stop those guys? And I don't think there was ever like a clear strategy to stop them. And I don't think that, uh, there's no blueprints. Now, if people tell you the blueprints, all you have to do is get pressure with your front four 60% of the time. Well, okay, yes, you have to dominate hmm. a game up front, which defeats every quarterback. That's not called a blueprint. That's called just be better hmm. at, a, you know, at this one thing. Being better is quite a good blueprint winning games. It's a good blueprint. But I don't think there's any real strategy to beating those top elite quarterbacks when they're at their best. You almost have to hope all right, you create a little bit of indecision that's usually not there. You kind of hope that they miss a few throws and, and all that stuff. I thought Breeze a few weeks ago was just a little off. They, they, the Falcons created enough indecision. Like, he took five or six sacks. That never happens with Breeze. He's decisive, quick passing game. He knows where to go. And if, the, if, if there's nobody open downfield, he'll find that check down as well as anybody. Um, there was just enough indecision from Breeze. A few weeks ago mm -hmm. and you never see that at home dome where said this is the only time in the breeze era of the saints that they scored fewer than 10 points at home mm -hmm. first time yeah, ever it's since 2006 as i say that's not happening again so that's that's the big anomaly now you're going to atlanta which there's you know dome and dome whatever it's another <laughs> nice nice easy place to chuck the ball around i would expect more of a shootout here yes they got almost nothing out of their offense and Atlanta scored 26. Yep. So this is more likely to come back to being, all right, now we're both in the 20s and we have a more interesting game. And that's what these teams have been playing for years now, is like these high-octane right. shootout type of games. Now, I think one thing that was interesting in the last game that they had was um, the Falcons had some monster performances up front. Like Grady Jarrett was a game-changer in that. They, they had one of those games where... An individual matchup along the, the trenches, the offense and defensive line, can wreck a game plan, right? If you do nothing yeah. to change it. Grady Jarrett had one of those games where he was just wrecking Andrus Pete every single snap and caused major problems. Now, you would assume, having seen that happen, they would make some adjustments. Maybe think about, you know, double-teaming Grady Jarrett every now and again. The way, you know, we saw the Ravens against the Rams... Aaron Donald was double teamed almost every single snap. Now, Aaron Donald still got some wins, but it was more than enough to basically take him out of that game. Um, the Saints really need to think about dedicating a little bit of resource to Grady Jarrett and just making sure that the reason they lose this game isn't because he is dictating the time Drew Brees has to throw. Right. Um, I think that should be eminently attainable, and that should go a long way toward changing it. Uh, Matt Ryan last week, at the time of recording the podcast, I think you threw out a turnover-worthy play number mm -hmm. for Matt Ryan. I think it ended up at six. Six. Ouch. So Matt Ryan was, again, one of those guys through the years where you're like, I don't think there's no... We talked about him the other day, and I think it got headlined, is he finally in decline? We weren't... I mean, we we're just saying, hey, is, are there some warning signs here with Matt Ryan? Six turnover-worthy plays. There was never a point in Ryan's game where you're just like, here's a weakness. Here's this weakness that shows up every week, and it's got to be disguised. Like He's pretty good at everything. Mm -hmm. He's had bouts in his career where he's been inconsistent on the deep ball. And you mentioned, you know, a little panicky under pressure at times. But again, it's one of those things that fluctuates, right? In 2016, when he was the MVP candidate, not only was Shanahan scheming it up great, but Ryan was great under pressure. Like Everything was going well. He does look like the O-line's in his head, and he's just not seeing things as clearly this season. All that said, he's still capable. He still throws beautiful timing routes at the intermediate level. He's still got Ridley to throw to. I know Julio's been – Julio's a little banged up, right? So um, there's a question there, but he's had weapons to throw to, and I, all, I will always believe that this passing offense is – capable of handling themselves in a shootout even with offensive line woes i mean that was one of the more interesting things the last game right is that ryan had one of his better games under pressure in a while yeah so the, i think if you look on paper the saints defensive front should have the advantage over atlanta's offensive line they should be able to get a significant amount of pressure they pressured him last time 16 out of 38 dropbacks you know about what you'd expect enough to cause problems only usually this season, Matt Ryan has had real issues when he's been under pressure, but that game, he didn't. That game, he actually played fine under pressure, um, scored one of his touchdowns under pressure, 
and things were a disaster. Like, if the Saints get the same volume of pressure this time again, I think it will be a different story just because Ryan hasn't really shown the ability to deal with it that well this season. Julio did not practice on Tuesday, but um, as we say, every time these teams match up, if he's on the field, Julio versus Marshawn Lattimore is always, you know, when they're both healthy and on the field, is always a great matchup to watch. Anyway, this game, what are you expecting here? Uh, I think it will swing back towards New Orleans. I just don't see a way that last time repeats itself, and I think fundamentally the Saints are better. Yeah, that's where I'm going to. So we'll have the, the road team winning both. Yeah. So there we go. Let's get into the Sunday slate. Marshawn Lattimore is also limited. So the two guys that you just want to see one-on-one, mm -hmm. see what happens. You want to get rid of me and get back to more great PFF YouTube content? All you have to do is push that button right there and subscribe. Thanks for watching.